Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. It is promptly 1 p.m. Eastern time here. All right, so again, we're here to talk about uh, end of year topics and payroll. The documents that I said are attached under the handouts, the W-2 filing instructions, the 1099 filing instructions will be available out on the resource center page or on the end of year page um, again soon. I'm just reminding folks here that Atrix just released, that's our tax documents provider company that is our partner in Church Windows, has just released those tax documents yesterday. Um, we even thought it could have been as early as today, as late as today, but they were um, good enough to get those available and released and they were in uh, available as of yesterday, so it gave us a little bit more time to get these documents worked up. The process, folks, for those documents, for W-2s and 1099s is virtually exactly as the same as it was last year. Um, the, just there's some of the Atrix pitch screens that are look, look a little different, but for the most part, in terms of the actual production of the documents, they're virtually identical. Anyway, we're going to have other webinars on W-2 uh, generation, 1099 generation, and uh, e-filing and everything else uh, when we get into January. So there will be events. Folks, these documents aren't due to be required to be released or out and sent until the end of January. The fact that we've got these documents right now available for you that really details exactly how it looks right now is pretty great. So if you really, really need to get them out now or sooner, you can we'll find the details in those documents. Okay. Um, next most important thing to keep in mind about all of this, folks, please, please make sure that you're on version 25.23.1. This is really important for this for payroll and the, the production of your documents, um, <clears throat> not just your W-2s, W-3s, 1099s, but also for your 941 form. We've worked with Atrix extensively, the API function. There should be less problems with getting the 2023 forms available for you. Um, so just, but just make sure you're on that latest version. If you haven't gotten the email or you're unsure about it, please um, let, give us a call, 800-533-5227, okay? But right now, for version 25-23-1 is really important for, the, for your payroll end of year stuff, okay? Um, you, we use Atrix as our third-party tax document um, preparer company, folks, okay, in payroll. That is who we use. All right. <clears throat> when you look at the document, the uh, first document that we had there, uh, the payroll New Year prep and help document, it does list both role. First of all, our support hours for January. Just be aware we have extended hours Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Fridays 9 to 5, and Saturdays 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and then we'll be back to regular hours after January. And it also lists the support and office hours and when we're closed. Again, as the heading on the top of that document points out there, whether you are paper filing or e-filing, you will go through our third-party company, Atrix. That is the interface in Church Windows payroll now, or accounting for that matter, for your 1099s, all right? So the first thing there talks about that really the big change that everybody's been kind of, been kind of worried and concerned about is that the IRS and their attempt to limit the number of paper returns, okay, attempt to save money, okay, um, are requiring that employers with 10 or more returns electronically file, okay? And by 10 or more returns, I don't mean 10 W-2s or 10 1099s, combined no total number of returns, okay? So if you've got six employees and four contractors, you have to e-file, e okay? If you've got five contractors and four employees, you do not because you have nine. But as soon as you get that, ten, that number 10 threshold for uh, combined returns of 1099s and W-2s, you've got to e-file, 
okay? Um, and again, we're going to recommend that you do that through church windows, either through accounting for 1099s or through payroll for 1099s and W-2s, if applicable, depending on where those folks are paid, okay? And we're going to show you a little bit about how that's going to process is going to work, and we're going to talk about it a little bit here, okay? Th this is really important in version 25 because one of the things is we, they, that talks about there in the middle of that document is how many W-2s will you file? Well, the best place to look, of course, is in Church Windows Payroll is when we go up here, what I, well, and there's a warning about PTO, but expiring PTO, but we go up to reports and export tax reports, as I did in the webinar a couple months ago, look at the draft W-2 form, folks. When you do that, you choose that, you choose the year of 23, you go to next, it details or lists all of the employees, and you can either count them here, or you can go to the actual draft um, W-2 form, look at the actual number of, of W-2s that it's presenting, okay? Um, don't, don't assume that the number of pages that are being produced are the number of, of W-2s that you're printing, because in this form, there's still two per page. So always go to the very last page of the report and look on the last page and see if you've got a blank one like we have here, okay? So I have nine because I've only got uh, right here, Lisa Young is my first one on page nine, on page five, so I only have nine W-2s. I don't have 10. So don't take the number of pages times two. Actually go down to that last page and determine that. But I know I have nine uh, employees that I have to produce uh, or have to print uh, W-2s for. 1099s are a little bit of a different matter, okay? Um, you know, I, I'm finished with that. I do, we don't have a draft 1099 form in here. Uh, so that becomes a little bit more tricky in the standpoint of how many do you have to file in payroll. I, you know, really, you might be able to run a report somewhere in payroll. In accounting, it's a little easier now. So if we go into accounting, and if I go here, now that you're on 25.23.1, I can run the report as it's dictated or indicated there at the bottom of the page, okay, by going to transactions and browse, you know, find out how many payments there were, looking at the credit or debit amount columns. But I can actually go up to reports, tax, here, and it's going to open that up. And here's all of my 1099 options in for 2023. So if, say, I'm choosing 2023 1099 NEC for year 23 and click print, it is now bringing up my list of my vendors who were paid or payees or contractors who were paid at least $600 or more in 2023. Now, that doesn't mean everybody here in this list is going to receive one, right? My utility companies, no. My gas company, you know. So you'd want to go down this list and kind of do a quick perusal and determine whether you're going to be printing or producing or print needing more than five. Uh, payroll, I think you do have uh, the under there, under your reports and export, you've got employee contractors. Uh, you might need to go to run something like your pay period earnings report maybe and maybe talk about taxable earnings or pay type earnings or even a history report, okay? Um, but, but I would probably go up to my taxable earnings report, uh, maybe here uh, go to and check just contractors and then go to print from there, however many contractors are on that report or in that list or how many you're going to need to produce from payroll, okay? So again, there are easier ways, provided you're on 25.23.1, in order to be able to um, determine how many W-2s or 1099s you're going to need to be filing. Okay, let me take a look at my... Yeah, and as I said on the W-2s, we do have that video out on the Resource Center page about the draft W-2 forms from a couple months ago. It's out on the Resource Center page, okay? Let me take a look at my... Okay, so about contractors, maybe, and maybe some of you do, maybe some of you don't, okay, again, we're not going to be going through the report generation process for W-2s or 1099s today, but the last thing I want to say about this is when you're printing, if you have paid contractors in both payroll 
and in accounting, we're not going to detail this, there is a way to be able to merge them into one filing status in, or one filing run in, when you, we, whether it's through accounting or through payroll, there's a way to actually merge two different data files into um, one to file once, even if you've paid them. You don't have to go, oh, I've got to move all of my contractor information from accounting into payroll or from payroll into accounting. There is a way to be able to, to merge those two, two different data files from two different databases, data sets essentially together. That's going to again be covered in a video or in a webinar we're going to do sometime in, in January uh, now that the forms are now available and we have all the steps to be able to do that. It's just we don't have time to cover it today. Okay, so just make a note for yourself. Oh yeah, I do have contractors that are paid in payroll and different ones that are paid in accounting. And sit tight, you're gonna, we'll get a document and a video out there on how to merge those together um, here before, you're, before you have to have those um, sent out and filed by the end of January, okay? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, pardon me, folks. A little tickle there in my throat. Um, yes, I'm seeing questions out there under there already of coming out from folks. The government has still not changed their policy, folks, on requiring the forms for 1099s and 1096s. You still do need to send purchase or order or get the official forms, three per page. You need to print those and send in the red copy if you have less than the 10 threshold, of course, of course. You'll need to print those and send those in. Unlike W-2s and W-3s where Atrix has the permissions to be able to print the W-2s and W-3 to plain paper. You do not need W-2 forms, but you do need to get from your a local company, um, a local company, uh, the 1099s and 1096s. It's now three per page, folks. Okay. Um, I don't think you need to print the employee's copy, but the copy you need to file with the government, you will need to get those. So just be aware. You have to order or use the actual official 1099s and 1099 form to send in, um, not so with W-2s and W-3s, okay? Uh, tax ID information. When we go into, a, say, accounting and we go to tax, a very common question, and this is something you'll need if I go to my 1099 NEC again, 23 tax year, reporting period, any print, tax ID information right here. We're going to get a lot of calls on that is, wait, I don't have tax ID information entered for my contractors or payees. Well, that's entered in payroll under the contractor file. In accounting, where that is entered is if I go into manage accounts, go down here into accounts payable, it's true whether it's a liability or a vendor, doesn't matter who or what, but you basically click here under that vendor, you go right over here to the vendor payee tab, and then when you scroll down here, you notice it says below account number, it says tax ID and tax type of ID. So if you type in whatever that number is, okay, and you over here, you have to choose the type of ID it is. Is it an EIN or is it a social security number? Okay, so if it's a social security number, it's got to be the same format that all of our social security numbers are in, right? Which is what, three, two, four. So um, nine digits in total for that, all right? Um, the, um, that's where that entered. And the, probably this is one of the most common things I hear in support throughout the course of the year is, well, I, I don't have, I'm not seeing it, and I have it in, entered in for them. You have to make sure, folks, that that information here is entered for those vendors and payees and liabilities here in the 2023 year. If you have it entered in 24, the chart of accounts in 24 is different from the one in 2023. But if you have it entered in say 23 and you copy forward your chart of accounts, all of that information will move forward. But if you've got a vendor in 2024 and you enter it there and you go back and try to print a form for 23 and it's not in 23's chart of accounts, still not gonna show. You've gotta go back into that year and make sure that that tax ID vendor name, type of ID, and everything is entered correctly, okay? 
So now when I go back up into say reports and export tax and I bring up my 1099 NECs and the one that I entered there should have, sh oh, I didn't, maybe it wasn't on that, Clark's Oregon Repair. I don't remember who that was with. Um, maybe I would need to close out of accounting and rebuild that. All right, I'm sorry, folks. We're just running out of time here. Uh, I just want to make sure I've got a few more things that we need to cover here. Um, again, W-2s and W-3s printed to plain paper and sent. Um, if you're underneath the 10 minimum 10 threshold, 1099s require the red forms to file with the government uh, to send those in. All right. Many of the questions um, that I've got in here are already are about ATRIX and e-filing. Okay. So the first thing that we recommend is go to a, go to churchwindows.com, go to our partners page, and then go here, go to Atrix. Okay. Uh, then it brings up here fi pricing filing options, 1099s, W 2 E filing. A lot of questions are coming up about this. It there is a, as it points out here, all right, it says right down here at the bottom left, everybody can see, I hope it says, uh, $24.95 minimum applies to all W-2 filings, okay? So that's going to be the minimum they're going to charge you just to file your W-2s. There is another charge to filing the 1099s. Even if you've got five and five, you're going to be paying that, at least at this point that we're aware of, $24.95 twice, okay? That occurs, We, I understand, is steep. If you have more, then it does become more about the actual individual employee or contractor pricing. And we notice here there's a list of their services. So if you want the complete service, meaning you want to have them mail your, the W-2s to your employees, you can do that. They host the W-2s online so they can be accessed later. They also file with the federal and state um, w, for W-2s in the SSA. That's $2.27 employee, per employee. But if you choose to go the probably one of the most simplest routes, if you have federal and state, is right here under federal W-2, W-3 filing, state filing, and then you can print your W-2s and W-3, W-2s, and distribute them to your employees. And it's similar for 1099s as well. So there's some considerable savings if you just have Atrix file with the federal, for the federal government and the state. Okay, if you have more than the $24.95 minimum. But basically, they're going to be charging you the $24.95 whether you have five employees or whether you have 10. Okay, until you start getting above $24.95, at which point the per employee per or per payee price kicks in. Okay. We asked Atrix for assistance on screenshots and things so we could show you how the process works. Their simple response to us was, this is a fairly standard, standard account creation process with Atrix, and if your customers have problems with our interface and creating accounts and filings, please have them contact us. So folks, if you have issues with creating accounts, filing processes, problems with Atrix with regards to getting those, please contact um, Atrix. That's true for 1099s or W-2s. Question I'm seeing is, will Atrix also file 1099 forms? And the answer is yes. Folks, they're going to do all of this. They can do all of it for you. Okay, W-2s and 1099s, uh, W-3 and 1096 as well. Okay, um, but just be aware, way I try to encourage folks to look at this is, you know, yes, the government reduced 250 forms for required for e-filing down to 10 in one year. Yeah, it's a shock. But what I can say with complete certainty is considering the penalty that you will be assessed per employee if you have, if you send in hard copy forms, that 40 less than $50 or $50 expense approximately that you'll be paying pales in comparison to what the government says that they'll assess you for sending in paper copies when you should not have, okay? So 
you know, I'm trying to trying to have you kind of maybe look at it from a more positive. They also deal with any issues with that come up with those. Okay, so if there's an issue with something that was filed, Atrix will go to bat for you. Okay, so like I said, there are ways that you can still save money if you have a lot of employees, um, but you don't want to pay the two twenty seven per empl employee and only spend the ninety nine cents and print your own and send them and distribute them. You can certainly do that. Okay. All right, we've gone a lot. We're going a little long here today, folks. I'm sorry. It's a complex topic. So, um, and the same is true for contractors as well. If you have to go, we get it. The video will be out on the website here soon. You can always come back and revisit that. Um, all right. So let me see here. Uh, okay. And on that document that the the payroll New Year prep and help document that was showing there the reports, it it talks about it on page two about if you have more than ten and you send them in, you're going to be subject to a penalty. And I've heard it can be up to several hundred dollars per per employee or per contractor. So again, fifty bucks seems pretty pretty minor when compare compare when dealing with perhaps some really severe financial penalties. W two forms can maybe printed through Atrix onto plain paper. Again, you can e-file with the government if you have more than five or ten you meet that and then print out and send your own if you wish um, and again the 1099s and 1096s must be sent on the red forms whether that's e-filed which Atrix will do for you um, or if you have less than 10 you can print those on the actual forms and send those in please folks if you're interested in other filing options please look at those URLs or, or web addresses that are at the bottom of that document, okay, on the page two of the Payroll New Year Prep and Help page, okay, document. There's some helpful information. You may find that there are other options for e-filing. I'm pretty sure that you probably can go in, if you're willing to key in all the information, you can go directly into the either the IRS or the, uh, the SSA's website and enter all that in, but it's going to be terribly tedious if you have a, um, uh, you know, if you have the, uh, if you have a lot of employees or contractors, okay. All right, okay, so finally, I haven't gone a couple of minutes, a few minutes long here. Unlike pay accounting, Church Windows Payroll has no end of year procedure, folks. It's very bottom of that page there. No end of year procedure is required in payroll. You literally just go in to calculate payroll and you enter the pay date and settlement date and your you know pay period started and ended with the 24 date and you're off and running posting payroll in the new year. Okay, uh, church windows as tax tables are updated will release an update that updates those tax tables in our software um, uh, as it as it as it is warranted. Okay, and folks, in order to transfer payroll into accounting, you do have to have your new accounting year open as well. So you just won't be able to uh, to uh, transfer payroll into accounting until 2024 is open, which of course I hope many of you do already have open because there's, well, no need to wait. You do not have to be finished with 2023 in order to open 24, okay? Um, okay, so folks, having gone a few minutes long here today, that is where we are going to leave our topic for today. <laughs>